Hey Instagram, I just wanted to pop in and say hello and thank you all for all the love for Think Like a Monk across the world with the number one book on the New York Times bestseller list, on the Sunday Times bestseller in the UK, number one book in India, in Australia, in Canada and South Africa, thanks to each and every single one of you. And I wanted to speak to an incredible, incredible individual uh, who is actually in South Africa right now because I know all of you in South Africa have been showing up. I've seen the stores in South Africa. I've seen everything. Uh, but I want to talk to a really awesome individual. So I'm just seeing when he's live. Oh, he's already here. Amazing. That was quick. Uh, none other than Sia Khaleesi. So if you know Sia, then you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, you're going to find out about an awesome human and a great individual who I'm so excited to connect with. Sia, how's it going? I'm good, brother. How are you doing? I'm doing really well, man. I'm doing really well. Are you in South Africa at the moment? Yeah, I'm in Cape Town, in South Africa. That's amazing, man. It's amazing. Well, how have you been? Uh, how have you been dealing with COVID? And how's your family? How is everything? Yeah, uh, family. Family is good. Uh, I think we've been fine during the lockdown. Um, yeah, we we were fortunate. Myself and my wife we were we were able to travel around South Africa during the time um, to yeah to try and help uh, where we could during the COVID nineteen. Yeah, I heard, I heard about the parcel delivery service you were doing. T tell us a bit about that because I'd love for people to hear about it. Yeah, so um, myself and my wife wanted to start our foundation. Um, um, we were in the process of planning on everything and obviously then COVID hit. So while we were still planning, we had to start working. So we started using our own personal sponsors um, to to start with the foundation, obviously some close friends were donated. So we started with PPE, helping uh, pri um, public hospitals and clinics by buying uh, sanitizer, gloves, and and masks for 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 the frontline workers. And then we started um, with um, buying food parcels for families for a minimum of three months uh, to make sure we help where we could. That's amazing, man. That's absolutely so beautiful. Uh, you're incredible. Not only are you the uh... You know the rugby captain and and a national hero and icon, but the fact that you are so dedicated to serving others and supporting others, especially at this time, it's it's phenomenal, man. I'm, I'm I, you know, hats off to you, like completely, completely in awe of your incredible work. It's it's absolutely phenomenal, and and I'm sure you've helped a lot, a lot of people. What what did you see? Tell me about what you saw when you were going around to help people and, and something that you learned or something someone said that you remember or that has stayed with you? Um, I think for me, it was, I think seeing how people are still struggling in 2020, um, I think it's really, um, it, it really hurt me most, you know, I got touched because I thought I knew how people struggled. I thought I knew what the struggle was, I mean, from, from where I came from. But what I realized is that people are, in like the worst conditions ever. You know, there are people without water around the country. That really touched me quite a lot. And it, it, it was heavy on me. And it was a struggle as much as we went to go do work, we couldn't help everyone around us. You know, it really was hard to tell some people that we don't have anymore. Yeah, that's amazing, man. Well, I hope you keep doing that. I'm sure you will. And it's, it's really inspirational, man. Really, really inspirational. And uh, I know a lot of people, I can see all the... Uh, South African flags going crazy over <laughs> here, which is which is amazing. I love it. I love the love that yeah. everyone no, has for you. Thing. I think because like I think without the the people of um of South Africa, like and people actually all around the world, like there's no ways we would have been able to do the work that we're doing as a foundation. And we are super grateful for everybody who's be who's played a part. And it doesn't matter how big or small, because at the end of the day, what we realize is that. This is a fight for, for humanity. You know, we all got to get through this together and we got to help each other because it's probably one of the first times in the world where we all went through the same thing, something like this so big. Yeah, no, it's a good point. You're right. It's the first time that human pain has been so collectively experienced, uh, for sure. And you just put your kids to sleep, right? Yeah, I, just, I was just <laughs> putting them to sleep. Now my daughter, I had to read them. Uh, I was reading them uh, like a book. I was reading them the the like the little children's Bible, so I read for them. And my daughter, she always tells me to sit on the chair, so I was sitting on the chair for her. And and yeah, I always have to do that, but I couldn't sit because of well, obviously I had to come chat to you. <laughs> <laughs> how how how? Sia, tell me how important you think your 
your faith has been during this time, like your, your own faith and your spirituality and that connection, like you were just saying you were reading the little children's Bible to your children, like to, how, much, how important has faith been to you in your whole career and also now? Oh, honestly, I think with, without faith, um, I would have lost my ways, you know, and I think with, with the strong wife behind me who's so much stronger than me in faith, pulls me with, you know, and not leaves me behind and encourages me. And, and I think without her, because she's the one, I think after the 2015 World Cup, you know, she kind of pushed me to go back to church. And I started going, you know, I was like, not like fully committed. And then like some of the guys that I met with the church, you know, uh, some of my close friends, Vessel, they were like, just, you, just, just come, you know, even if you don't want to come or <clears throat> you start, you're not finding the connection, just come. So I, so I just started going and then I started, you know, felt like I was belonging. And then, yeah, and then my life started changing, you know, I started believing, but obviously it still took a while. It took me a long time. I remember I got baptized in 2015. I still had to fight so many people and I'm still fighting it today. But honestly, without my faith, there's no ways I would have overcame a lot of the battles. And I don't think I would be here right now talking to you. That's amazing, man. I, I love hearing that because I know that for me, my, my spirituality and my connection, and, and we share that in common. My wife, my wife is my, uh, my inspiration too. So we have that in common. We, we both traded upwards. Uh, That's amazing. And, and yeah, I'm married to a great, woman with amazing, uh, amazing spiritual depth and she inspires me so much as well. So we, we sh I don't have kids yet, but I, I know that she will be the one to really help our kids also develop their depth and their connection as well, man. So yeah, Take your time. Take your time. <laughs> good advice, good advice, thank you. You're the only person who said that to me. No, but you know what, they, honestly, my kids, like I live to like to try and be a good role model to them. I want to make them proud every day. I don't want them to look elsewhere for role models. I want them to look to me, and hopefully, the way I live, you know, through all the mistakes that I can set a good example for them before I even start of being a role model for someone else or who someone who's looking at me from the outside. If I can get it right here at home, I think it will. It will. It gives me more purpose in life, you know, to be a great husband and make so my kids can see how I treat my wife. And that's how they should see. That's where they should see from, from here instead of looking elsewhere. Yeah, no, I love that, man. That's beautiful. And uh, yeah, thank you for that. Thank you for the tip. I will, I will remember, I will, I will remember that advice from you. Tell me a bit about, I want to hear, I know you've got questions. I'm asking a lot of questions because I'm fascinated by you and I know it's late there. So I'm grateful that you stayed up. So I appreciate you. Um, but, Tell me a bit about some of the, like you are a, you know, number one athlete in your game uh, at the top of your level. Like just tell me about and tell us about the mindsets. Like if you had to say there were three mindsets, not just the physicality, but what have you had to do to your mind that has allowed you to be at that optimal level and play and perform at that stage? What have you done mentally? I'm intrigued. Yeah, for, so for me, Obviously, the physical preparation, everything is obviously a big part of what we do. But like when I'm at my best, the the first thing is obviously my faith. That's where I put everything on my faith. I rely everything on my faith. Like I gotta make sure that I'm good, um, in in on on that front. And then my family, obviously, if my family life is good and my family is happy at home, the kids are happy, I'm always in good spirits, you know. And then I think. As well, like for my teammates, you know, when I'm playing now, my teammates and my coaches and everybody in that circle is, is, is hugely important for me. But my motivation, I always put extra pressure for me on my shoulders because of where I come from. I always think about like the work that I'm doing with the foundation. Without rugby, without me succeeding on the field, there's no way people will want to work with you. You know, I've got to always be playing my best because that's the first and foremost thing. And then making sure that I'm always in my best at all times so I can get the opportunities and get people wanting to work with me to be able to change the people's lives of where I come from. Or actually, anyone who is in a, who's, who's in a similar position than I was when I was younger to try and create a better future for them and a better narrative. 
I love that, man. I love that. So it's, it's brilliant to hear that for you, rugby is not just a passion, but it's your purpose because it helps you do all the philanthropy work. It helps you do your service in the world. No, 100%. Um, I love, first of all, I love playing rugby and it's like a passion since I was a, was a kid, but it, it's opened up so many doors. That's the one thing I always take in, in, in what we do. You know, you can be so much than a sportsman. There's so much more you can do, you know, and, and it, it opens up so many doors with the connection that they made. Obviously, it's all about like what's in your heart and what you want to do, but you are, it will always allow you to be where you want to be as long as you make sure that you deliver on the field. And, and it's hard sometimes. Sometimes you have bad, bad seasons, but you can't, you can't run away from, from that. You got to play well first on the field and then the rest will follow. Yeah, yeah, that's good advice. And, and, I, and I love that. I think a lot of the iconic athletes are people who have gone beyond the sport. And, and yeah. I have a little see. So I used, to, uh, I used to play rugby for my A team in my school. I used to be a lot bigger when I was, when I was younger, but I used to play for my high school. Uh, my position was um, always number eight. So I was always a number eight in, in rugby. So uh, my favorite position. Is that your favorite position? Yeah, yeah. yeah? But I, I'm away from it now. I'm playing six, so <laughs> I'm I'm used to that. I used to love rugby, man. We used to train. My my rug my school was really into rugby, so we used to train about three four times a week, and we play every Saturday. We play against all the other schools. I loved it. It was one of my favorite sports. I haven't haven't played since I was eighteen. But uh, where, say that again. Where did you play? So I played at school in London. So I was born and raised in London. Okay. And my school was in Barnet. It was called Queen Elizabeth's Boys School. So we had a big rugby team there. And so, uh, yeah, I used to play. I, I played for every year from age 11 through to age 18 for seven years. I played three, four times a week, played every Saturday. I was, I was okay at the time. Uh, but uh, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. So next, uh, next time, next time I see when I see you when you come to LA, or or when I come to South Africa, we need to do a, a rugby session together. <laughs> definitely, I'll be keen. I'll be keen. Come here. <laughs> Say that again. Have you been to South Africa? You know what? This was going to be my first trip. I was, and that's why I'm so grateful to you. I was so excited to visit. I haven't. No, I haven't been. I wish I could come. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to, first of all, congrats on, on, on your book. You know, it's Thank the best set in South Africa. That's really amazing, man. And um, I'm sure that people would love to see you and hear from you, you know, obviously when you're in South Africa. And, like, maybe have, a, like, a little planning session, you know. I, I mean, for you to be doing so well, I'm sure they would love just to meet you and see you. Yeah, I'd love to come, man. We have to do something together when I come. That would be the most fun because I feel like, I, I see a lot of comments, people saying, love seeing you guys together. Uh, so it'll be cool. But yeah, thank you, man. I, I'm so grateful to the South African people for giving me so much love and support for my book. You know, it's, for me, it's very humbling to just see that so many South African people have been like posting the book and supporting the book and the stores in South Africa that I've seen pictures and it's just, it's amazing to see all the love. So I want to come and give that love back. Uh, so I hope I, I hope I get a visit when it's all over. Definitely, man. It will be awesome. You just let me know. I'll be around. <laughs> and, and and tell me, like, what was your motivation for your book for for the book? Um, obviously, I I I, I haven't read it yet, so I want to hear uh, a whole lot more about it. Just tell me, like, what was your motivation? Why the title? You know, what's behind it? Yeah. So I lived as a monk for three years. And when I lived as a monk, we were trained in so many amazing techniques and practices and mindsets. And I was just like, wow, the world is so stressed and anxious and there's so much pressure. But if everyone could find their monk mindset, then they could find that peace, that calm, that purpose. And a lot of what you stand for, I mean, your discipline in the game, uh, your service, your desire to do good in the world, that's very aligned with thinking like a monk because... Monks are always focused on how they can find peace and calm and discipline and then how they can serve others with that. So my intention was just how do I make these ancient and timeless principles, make them relevant for people today so that people can actually find peace and purpose today in their life. Okay, okay. And, and where, where did you live? Where? 
Yeah, so I lived about two hours outside of Mumbai in India, which is where the ashram was that I lived at. And uh, I also traveled across Europe, but that was where the main monastery or the main ashram was. It was in India. So it was, it was literally in the middle of uh, nowhere at the time. It was a phenomenal experience. No, that's amazing. We actually, I was in Japan last, um, two years back, and I went to go visit a monk. And, and it was an amazing experience. I met him and his family, and he's, like, he explained to me he's been living there for quite a while. But he had, I thought because, like, I thought you just grow up and you just become a monk, you know. If your dad is one, you also become one. But he said, no, he had experiences. He studied in America and different places, and then it took time for him. And I asked him, like, are there rules and everything? It's like, no, it's just the, 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 the way of life, you know? Yeah, exactly. It's a way of life. You don't have to live in a monastery. I mean, real like monks who've dedicated, they live in a monastery. But for all of us, we don't have to live like a monk to think like a monk. We can take on the practices and the mindsets. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it was, we used to wake up at 4 a.m. every day. Uh, we take cold showers. You sleep on the floor. And then you live in a... All your possessions fit into a gym locker. So everything you own fits into a gym locker. Uh, so that's kind of a bit about the lifestyle. And you and like you able to survive through that. Like now, would you be able to go back to that from where so you I, are now? It's so I go back I go back every year with my wife to just live there for about two, three weeks again, just to focus, to stay grounded, to to stay true to my roots. So I go back every year. But yeah. um I, you know, I, I think now that I'm married and I've moved on, I still do all the meditations and I still do all the practices. I don't wake up at 4 a.m. anymore. I, yeah. I need to get some good sleep, but I, I still do all the practices, the meditations, the journaling, the, the gratitude, all the practices are still part of my life. Amazing. Amazing. See, what you're saying, <laughs> there, like, probably your meditation and everything, like for me, that's like my worship time. That's where yeah. I put it and I sit in my car like on my way to training you know I mean there's, there's no perfect place for worship you can worship anywhere and everywhere you know so that's <clears> my <throat> thing with me during the day like if I'm feeling down or I'm not in a good place I'll have to put in on my, put, put in my music I'll, or sit down and read a verse somewhere you know and those kind of things help me in, in my faith that's the kind of thing that I do yeah. So inside the book, I actually quote a lot of Christian monks as well who have phenomenal mm. teachings. So when I, when I put the book together, I didn't just look at my tradition. I looked at every tradition in the world. And so there's teachings in here from, from all monk traditions, because what I found was that there was so much beauty in so many ancient texts. And there's a, there's a really nice quote um, said by uh, Martin Luther King and Ivan Pavlov. And the quote says, if you want a new idea, read an old book. Mm -hmm. And so what I tried to do in this book was get loads of ideas from lots of these old wisdom books. Uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of the Bible too. It's, it's been really important in my life. Uh, I remember the first time I started going to church uh, was when I was 16 years old because my because we celebrated christmas but i didn't really know what christmas was about Man. and so yeah. i started going to church when i was 16 because i really wanted to understand what christmas was about and that's when i read the bible and i you know i've had so many beautiful experiences sitting there with verses and i i recommend to a lot of people to sit with a to sit with an old book and to read a prayer or a verse is so powerful yeah no that it always like works for me and and honestly <laughs> Uh, through everything nothing helps me more than that like if, if it's not worship music it's a bible you know it always it has the answers for everything and, <laughs> and that you know with, there's always a verse for every single situation that you're in in your life because you know we believe our maker has been also been tempted as much as we have you know so the answers are there you know and, and i love what you say like read an old book to get new ideas yeah, exactly. Yeah. All the, like what you're saying, what you just said, that the answers have already been figured out. Like people have talked about this for thousands of years and we have to find a way to implement them in our daily lives. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. Know, that's what makes all the difference. And yeah. And, and you know, what? for for everyone and any religion or anything like it's not easy. People think it's easy just because you, you believe or you've given a, your, your life to something. 
you're still going to get temptation. You're still going to get tempted. You're still going to keep on fighting the everyday battles, you know, within yourself. It's in every, that's so true, man. Like, I, I feel the same way when a lot of people ask me, like, oh, like, have you, have you figured it out now? And I'm like, no, no, no. Like, I have to do everything in this book every day. And if you do it every day, then you also will feel that calm and that stillness. But if yeah. you stop doing it, if you stop eating, the body's going to fall apart. And this is the same way. It's like you can't stop, you know, you have to keep going. Yeah. And, and, and like, what do you do? Like, do, do you have like good people around you who kind of believe in what you do, like to keep you accountable? Or when you're feeling down, like mates that you can go to and chat to about, yeah, whatever it is that, that you're going through. Because I find like my way, the circle that I have around me, you know, with my, I got like fellow Christian brothers who I go to. When I'm struggling, you know, where I can go to when I'm vulnerable, you know, because I think that's pretty important to have people around you who believe, not always have to be believe in what you believe in, but they, at least they know your values and what you stand for. Yeah, no, for sure. So I'm really fortunate that I have not only my monk teachers, but other people as well. And, and I always find like it's good to have mentors for different challenges in your life. So everyone has like physical trainers or coaches but you need to have spiritual mentors you need to have mindset mentors and so for me i have different people for different things and mm -hmm. and you're spot on and that's why i go back every year to um that's why i go back every year to live in the ashram because i love going back and living with the monks and having that experience again because that's the only way you don't lose your roots otherwise it's so easy right it's so easy to just get carried away no 100 percent. yeah you, i mean there's so much happening, you know, and you can get so busy in life that you forget to stay grounded and stay rooted. And that's, I mean, the most important thing, like the people around you always, like from, like my wife always, she will definitely like help me and say, you know, you need to calm down a bit or come back or go to what always worked for you, you know, and, and my friends as well, they, they call me out straight out. And I love that. I would rather have you tell me in my face tell me straight because you want the best for me and i'll take it in it might hurt me but i know you want the best for me other than going telling someone behind my back that never works for anyone no definitely definitely and and you're right i think you know we're fortunate that our wives are people that can lift us up uh mm. you know in in an encouraging way and i think that's a really important skill in relationships that if if someone is having a struggle or a challenge it's mm. really important to encourage them and support them, not to put them down. It's really easy to be like, oh, you're not, you're not spiritual today or you're not, yeah. you know, but, but that doesn't help anyone. Like we all need to feel uplifted and, and encouraged. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, we're lucky to have that in our lives. Yeah, 100%. No, I, I, I mean, that's so powerful. Uh, I, I, I love like having this kind of conversation. I think it's really important. It's one need, what needed in this day and age because everything else has been spoken about the new thing coming out the new app and whatever but stuff that are gonna build you as a human being inside to be a great human being and to be a person maintained with everything that comes through your way you know we all want to be something in life we want to get to the top but do, are you grounded in something is the foundation that you are standing on that when the bad time comes or other things come that you know you've got a strong foundation, whatever happens, you can stand there, you can stand firm and you've got good people, good soldiers around you who are with you, who are going to challenge you, call, um, be a, keep you accountable and you can challenge them too and inspire them. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man, for sure. I, that's the, you know, it's, that's how I felt when I, when I went to live as a monk. What I found is that we don't have a class at school called mind class or life mm. class, or there's no, there's no class at school. You learn math and English and geography and history, which is important, but you don't mm. learn about life and you don't learn about your mind and you don't learn about emotions. And, and mm. that's what I wanted to do with this was, how do I help people have a classroom for their yeah. mind and their life and their emotions? Because that's what we deal with in our adult life. Mm, 100%. No, that's, it's, it's definitely... Um, uh, needed, you know, and I think it's something that we try to do uh, myself and my wife to, like to try and prepare the kids as much as we can, you know, for, for, for the future and for times where we, we're not there, you know, um, yeah. so they can be strong in, in, in what they, they need to do. And I want to know, are, are you thinking of running, writing any more books? 
Yeah, definitely, man. I'm definitely, I'm going to start working on a new one literally by the end of this year because I, you know, this was an important first book, but I, I really feel that books have changed my life. Like I've read some amazing books that have had phenomenal experiences on my life. And so I feel like the best way to share that is through more books. So I'm excited, yeah. man. I'm really excited. And hopefully for the next one, I can come out there as well. So, uh, yeah, but... the borders are being open now. So hopefully America is one of the countries that can come into the country. So into South Africa, so you can come visit and then we can, yeah, I'll definitely come and support you. <laughs> When Thank you, come you man. In, your beautiful supporters here in South Africa. I can see they're all loving the book, all the comments that are going through. That's that's really amazing. And congrats, man. It's your first book. And you could already, already see that you're making a difference in people's lives. And I think that's all that that's about. Well, no, you're living the book, man. You're living everything in this book. <laughs> you're, you're putting it into practice. So that's the most beautiful thing to see is someone who's who's living that service, living that purpose and giving back. So... I'm inspired by you, man, and I, I appreciate you so much. I want to let you get some sleep. Uh, I know it's late there, and so I don't want to take too much more of your time, but I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for this, and I really look forward to meeting you, man. I'm really excited. Uh, thank you so much. I appreciate you. I really appreciate your time. Um, yeah, man, I wish we could have more, and I think we must do it again sometime. You know, just, yeah. check each other and just chat and share and see how things have been. Because I think like the kind of relations that we've had, the kind of chats that we're having today is, is, is important chats, you know, but like, that people need to hear more about, you know, because there's room for every single chat in, in this world, but this kind of chat and speaking about our faith, what we stand for and how, what we can do to make the world better, you know. And I believe we all have a, um, um, like a, a responsibility in this world, no matter what you do, no matter how big or small, as long as you're making a difference, not only for you, but for people around you, so that we can all like be in a place where you know we can look up to ourselves, where we can, like there's no hunger, there, there, there's no poverty around the world, you know, people are having equal opportunities. That's the most important thing for all humanity, not just for one group of people, but for everyone. I think that's the most important thing. That's beautiful, man. I love that. And and you're working on your, I, you're writing your autobiography too, the official one. Like yeah. You're working on that. That's exciting. Yeah, no, it's exciting, man. I'm excited to tell my story. Obviously, the like, um, it was there was a book written, you know, um, before somebody did an un, unauthorized autobiography, but then I decided I wanted to tell my story my own way, uh, and. And, and that's what I'm busy doing now um, with, with, with Hopper and Collins and uh, Boris is doing it. So I'm really excited for that. Just to, to tell it like it is. And, you know, I don't want to look like a hero. You know, I want to show the, the tough times that I had to be vulnerable and be honest at the same time, you know. And there's a lot of things that, like, I'm growing every day. There's a lot of things that I feel passionate about, you know. I, like, I'll talk about some of the social issues that... Um, have been there since I was young and then some of them are personal to me, you know, like gender-based violence and all that kind of stuff, why it's so important for me, why am I fighting for it? Because I always believe you got to fight for something that means something to you and something that, that's just maybe um, you've seen it somewhere and it really you can relate to, you know, it's harder for someone else to tell you to stand up for something that you got no connection to. And that's what I always encourage people, you know, and we all, can share our platform. We don't all have to fight just because I'm fighting for something else, you know. It's a platform for everyone. That's what I've realized, that if I'm fighting for gender-based violence and someone is fighting for someone else, they, they, they automatically think I'm competing with them. But I'm, no, let's share the platform. Let's acknowledge one another. And maybe in future, one of us, one of our things will be done, then we can join in fighting one movement, you know, because at the end of the day, we all want a fair society, a gender-equal society, you know. I love that, man. That is so beautiful. And uh, I'm excited to read your book, man. And I love what you said about people learning about your life and learning about the realities of it. I think that's really important that you tell your story. And, and I think it's going to be phenomenal. And I can't, wait to, I can't wait to read that and share it with the world as well, man. It's going to be really, really amazing. And uh, I'm excited for you. And I'm glad you're writing. It's, it's a fun process. It's, it's a yeah. fun process putting it together. And uh, even though mine wasn't an autobiography, they've got some biographical elements in it. There's some story, there's a lot of stories in there about my own journey and mistakes and challenges because people forget that you had challenges and you had stresses and that you were stuck and that everything was falling apart. So 
it's good to yeah. share those. But thank no, you, man. Oh, sorry, carry I'll, on. Sorry. Book, and I'll, I'll send you a photo as soon as I get a hold of it, man. I'll read, I've never re read a, a book flat out, you know, wow. so I'm going to... I'm gonna take this as a challenge, but I'm I'm sure it's gonna be it's gonna be amazing. And I love it that there's lessons in it, that there's so much that I can learn. And and yeah, so I'm looking forward to it, man. And thank you again for your time. Love to your wife and, and hopefully chat to you soon. Yeah, let's keep talking. Let's just keep talking, man. I you know, offline, these are great you're right, these are great conversations that we all need to be having across the world. And hopefully mm. everyone who's been listening and watching today, if you enjoyed this conversation with me and Sia, share it with your friends because we want you to have these conversations too in your own way about the things that matter to you and the things that are important to you. And to feel yeah. more confident having deeper conversations and feel mm. more confident having faith-based and, uh, and spiritual conversations that can be good for your heart and good for your soul. So sending you all so much love. See, I'm sending you love to you and your family and your wife. And, uh, I look forward to seeing you and meeting you, man. Thank you, my brother. Keep Thank you so much. Thank you, man. Yeah. You're the best. Thank you, man. Thanks for staying up. That was awesome, guys. If you just tuned in, go and grab a copy of Think Like a Monk at thinklikeamonkbook.com. It was awesome to talk with Sia. Thank you to each and every one of you. Have a great day.